All right, everyone, I think we should start now. Um, the rest of the participants can join us uh, once they're online. Um, thank you so much for being here again. Um, and I welcome you to the second day of our workshop. Um, I hope you have learned the basic structure, the workspace, and basic queries in NVivo yesterday. Um, you must have also done your assigned work um, by creating your own files, importing them into the EndNote, I'm sorry, NVivo, and then you must have tried to code different portions of those files to create different nodes. I hope that was seamless and you were able to do that on your own. If not, you can ask me questions and I would help you out in creating nodes of your specific research. Now, before we uh, actually go ahead today and uh, get deeper into basic four approaches of qualitative data analysis, uh, what I would like to ask you is um, from the outset is, can you hear me? Uh, is the voice clear? Is there something that I need to change just to make sure that we are on the same page? Okay, fair enough. Now the second portion, is there anything you would like to clarify from the le lecture yesterday. What we studied yesterday, uh, if I were to give you a brief recap of what we went through, uh, we talked about the NVivo workspace. How did the interface look like when we fire up NVivo in the beginning? How to create new projects? And within those projects, we studied to create different data types, how to import files in NVivo, and if there is anything uh, that we cannot import in NVivo, like I told you that we have external files that we would need to only code as externals and not something that's can be imported in NVivo and then coded. We studied about that also. And we also st studied about the text-based coding. That means that you open a file that you have imported and then you select the portion of the text that you want to code and then create a new node from that. Um, we also studied about basic queries, how to create basic queries. Uh, for example, the word query or word frequency query that tells us the most frequent used word in your files. We also learned about memos and notes, how to create them. These are basically your observations about a file or a node that you would like to remember when you're trying to analyze and you're at the part of thematic analysis. Yesterday, we also studied about three levels of analysis, the descriptive, the thematic, and then the analytical portion of the quantitative and qualitative data analysis. Today, we're going to get deeper into data visualizations, uh, different advanced codings, creating uh, queries that we can save. Also, we will study about cases and relationships. And finally, how we're going to create reports based on our nodes and cases and relationships, and then share it with our supervisors, colleagues, or journal editors based on who you want to share it with. Now, before I get to that part, one important thing as a prelude is very important for all of you to understand that what is the basic procedure to organize our qualitative data. This is one thing that we can code our files, our 
images, audios, transcriptions, and other external sources. And that's another thing. How do we actually organize all of these that actually make sense? And I told you yesterday that the organization of your project will totally depend on specific research that you're doing. So there's no set pattern or particular formulas that you can use. This is not quantitative research that we have to use certain criteria to choose the test. For example, if you have continuous data, categorical, nominal, ratio, interval, then you know that your dependent or independent variables have a certain type. So you already know that which test you want to do based on your goals, which could be classification tests, which could be descriptive tests and predictive tests. Bhavna, instead of um, merging different projects, what we do is that we basically merge the files if they are interrelated with each other. We can also create relationships. So I'm going to talk about this in detail today where I can show you how do we create uh, relationships between different ideas and themes. Um, higher, I'm going to just address this question in a moment where I'll totally uh, go deep down into the phenomenological analysis and in grounded theory, ethno ethnography, and narrative research. So just bear with me, I'm just coming to that. So what I'm going to explain to you today is what are the four basic research, qualitative research approaches that we normally employ in our research. Now there are numerous different ramifications of these theories. But essentially what we do is that we follow one of those four approaches commonly in our projects. So I already sent you a file in WhatsApp group in which uh, I would explain, this is the basic, basically a chapter from a book in which it is explained in detail how we are going to approach these four types of qualitative data. So in that file, if you scroll down to this table, table 4.1, I have just shared the screen. Can everyone see that? Okay. So now we have this a screen in which there are four basic types of qualitative approach. Some people consider case study also a fifth approach, but I would argue that this is more of a, a tactic than a strategy. Those overarching strategies are ethnography, boundary theory, phenomenology, and narrative research. These four are the most used social science qualitative data methods or approaches you can call them. Now there are distinct differences between these four approaches and how we actually differentiate between these approaches depends on what you're studying. So most likely if you're exploring the life of an individual, for example, if you are studying the life cycle of a specific person, you're writing an autobiography, or you're writing a case study, or you're writing uh, a certain person's uh, biography, then you would use the narrative research. Narration basically is the subjective a description of that person's life chronologically. For example, where was he born? What did he do after um, he became a teenager? Um, what were the 
socioeconomic background, what were the circumstances he lived in, how did it affect his personality, and what achievements did he make in his lifetime. So these narrative researches um, basically focus on a single entity, which is individual. Now, moving on to phenomenology, what we do is that um, instead of focusing on a certain person, we focus on a certain experience. So remember, phenomena is the ex experiences that um, certain people have among them and which is shared. So there is a certain experience that so many other people have experienced and their narrative of how that experience felt is studied under the phenom phenomenology. So that contains more than one person and that is focused more on an experience than on a person. Now the third form of qualitative approach is the grounded theory. Now the difference between grounded theory and phenomenology is that while phenomenology focuses on the essence of the experience shared by many people, grounded theory basically makes a theory or postulates uh, a hypothesis which it develops into a theory um, after corroboration from the data from the field. Now in that case, data from the field and could be the narratives of a single person or the experiences of many people on which we can base our theory. So our theory is basically grounded in the experiences of certain people or life story of a certain person. Moving on forward, we get to a more concentrated level of analysis in which the subjects are not only some people or their shared experiences or a certain individual, but a whole cultural group that share a certain characteristic or certain values or ideas or beliefs. So what we do that, uh, what ethnographists do that, they live in a certain um, environment where there, is, there are certain beliefs and values and ideas that are exist and cherished among people as core beliefs. So what they do is that they describe and interpret the culture sharing groups, for example, native Indians or Aboriginal Australians or Sami people in Sweden or Inca people in South America. So if you are studying those people, they are bound together or they're grouped together by their ethnicity. And then you study their culture and their belief systems and whatever interests you in that specific population. So for example, uh, one of the most famous cultural studies or ethnographic study uh, was by uh, Lewis Jean Strauss, which um, is in the Brazilian rainforest. And that's uh, one of the most famous book. Uh, it's called The Sad Tropics. Um, that was written um, a couple of centuries ago. He was a French sociologist. And this book was one of the prime examples of ethnography and how um, these researchers, anthropologists study uh, people in distant cultures and their belief systems. Now, finally, case study is the more common one um, in modern research where we focus on only one setting, which could be an organization or um, industry or a group of people where there is an interaction to be seen and that's only specific to that place. Uh, so, for example, it's very common in business studies to study um, an organization or an industry and interpret the findings from um, those learnings and then explain it to the academic community. Ethnography is a very broad term, Fatma, 
so it includes a lot of strategies that can be employed in order to study the population that you are studying uh, one way of doing that is naturalistic observation in which you do not interact with the environment and you observe people in their native environments this is not always possible because of antagonism of the subjects especially in cases where they're they're less educated and more primitive and they have certain xenophobic ideas in those cases um, there is a certain bridge that we have to use the interpreters for example in older ethnographic studies the earlier ethnographic studies when the word was not as global as it it, to, it is today and they were used to bribe the aboriginal people with different candies and photographs um, and other things uh, in order to be able to live with them and study them um, and they we have very good ethnographic studies in um, american indian uh, population um, and how they actually got to know them uh, one of the more dramatized or let's say the fictionalized version of um, ethnography is the famous character Pocahontas um, who was Indian American and she was about to sacrifice herself for her people in order to save them from the white colonists. So it's a very deep topic that can be explored and like I said in the beginning that there are so many methods to study but naturalistic observation and could be one of them now that i've explained all five qualitative approaches um, i've also told you about the differences about them for example narrative research is the life of one individual and in phenomenology um, its experiences in grounded theory it's based on experiences of so many people and in ethnography it's a whole cultural group and finally case study is the entity or an organization that we are studying now many of these ideas are have spawned from social sciences and humanities like anthropology and psychology and sociology um, and these have ever since stuck um, in their research method narrative the unit of analysis, uh, once again, before we jump to en vivo, is to make sure that you understand what kind of research you want to do. Because if you do not know the kind of research that you're doing, you won't be able to code them appropriately. So the unit of analysis for narrative research is one person. Phenomenology, it's the several individuals shared experience. Ground theory, it's studying a process or action or interaction that includes many people. Finally, ethnography is a whole culture group and case study is a certain event, program or an entity.